quick addendum here for the hardware video. I realized that uh, I never showed actually doing any prints with the modifications because I, I recorded like two hours or something worth of information and videos for that and I ended up cutting it down. I tried to get it down to like 45 minutes or so without losing too much information. And even then, when you get in that situation, sometimes it's information overload. So I did the extra shortened down video where I just cut out all of the side details and all that and stuck that in a separate like edited down version. So I'm just going to do a quick print of whatever is on my SD card right now. So you can see that the whole thing is working and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, here we go. Sorry about all the noise. That's just from the two blower fans on here. Hopefully you can see everything that's set up. Sorry about the crap audio. My microphone's all the way on that side. Um, <clears throat> I'm powering the Duo off of USB, which is not ideal, but, you know, it works fine for right now. So if you can see, the graphical display comes on, but you don't see anything on it right now. If you pop the reset button, it comes up fine. I don't I don't know why it does that. I haven't had time to look into it. It's just a strange little quirk. But you can see everything's working, the temperature right there and all that stuff. So I'm going to preheat PLA. And I'll fast forward through that so you don't have to sit here for like four minutes and wait for everything to heat up. Now I'm just going to pick something off of the SD card. I'll do this one right here. I think this is just an oval with a little notch in it that I was using to test uh, skip steps on Trinamics drivers. So that's going to heat up to 215. Actually, I might take it up higher than that. take the nozzle up to 225. I didn't do um, PID tuning on the nozzle, so it's a little bit off and it thinks it's hotter than it is. So I'm going to take this up to like 225 and then it should be around like 215. Hopefully this doesn't jam up. This filament is kind of dusty. I wiped it off, but I was doing some woodworking in here, so everything's got a layer of dust on it. These are always on cooling fans. Obviously, I don't have anything plugged into the other inputs. That's why our little fan animation is not going. I always forget how loud these are after I've been printing with Trinamics forever. Ignore that dumb rattle, it's this bolt right here. I have that loosened up because I was experimenting with this stupid blower over here and I just never got it to tuning it back down again. I'm going to bump this heat up a little bit because it uh, changed after the first layer. If you're wondering why the X light keeps blipping, I have the wrong offset set for this big dumb extruder. So it thinks the bed's somewhere that it's not. As a result, I'm going to have a dumb flat spot on that side, but whatever, it's just a demonstration. Oh, that rattle's annoying. I'm going to try to put a piece of tape on there and shut it up.
I'm just scroll around on here so we can see what's going on. Now, this is just printing off just regular, boring, old, cheapy as possible SD card. I tried a couple others and they seem to work fine. I was a little weirded out because this is 5 volts going into the backlight here, and then on the board you have a regulator that bumps it down to 3.35 for the SD card, and then it has this um, high to low buffer here because it's assuming you're getting 5 volt signals into your, your SD card and it's going to drop it down to 3.3. I didn't know if I was going to have any trouble with writing, but it, it seems to be okay. And this is all running off, off software SPI. These, if you remember from the video, this is the breakout for the hardware SPI that's on the the little SPI that header that used to be ICSP port on your Mega. And these jumpers are actually from the proper pins because I just went ahead and clipped all of the pins off that aux header so that I could mess around with either hardware versus software SPI for the whole thing. Sharing your hardware SPI bus for these graphical LCDs is not always the best thing because you have to access the card and the LCD at uh, different rates because the driver for these, what is it, the 79 blah blah, whatever it is, they, they tend to be, you have to feed them super slowly or else they get all goofy or they just, you know, won't initialize properly and you get all wacky screen corruption and things like that. So the software SPI seems to be behaving much better. I don't know if that would be fast enough for like quick delta printer moves or like, you know, high speed core XY or even Cartesian movements. I mean, the, the mathematics and kinematics don't really matter. It's, it's the access rate. And we're done. Let me spatula that off of there. That's not bad. It's a little bit of goofiness on this one layer, but that's probably when I was messing around with the tape. There's our flat spot for my bed being confused. That's it. Super exciting. I'll get the video on how to set up Marlin 2 for, um, you know, th this mod and the 32 bits in general. I'll get that out soon. I took a ton of screenshots and notes while I was doing it, so I just have to put those in some kind of form that humans can understand. So, until then, live long and prosper.